Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got an interesting Les Paul classic from 2017 to look at today in the very shortly lived Ocean Burst. More specifically, Green Ocean Burst. So let's go ahead and dive into this right away. The first thing that really sticks out to me is the top on this one. It's got such an intricate vining pattern to it. It almost looks like somebody painted it that way intentionally. But if you know anything about these 2017 Les Paul classics, that's kind of how the wood grain pattern is in these maple tops. So here's an example of a different one that Dave's Guitar Shop had at one point in time. You can see it's got kind of a similar thing going on, but not quite as extreme as this one. This, <laughs> I don't know if I love it or hate it. It's kind of one of those tops. But had I had seen this brand new, I probably would have picked this one for a review and demo. But comparing them back and forth here, it looks like they've changed pretty much everything about this. So that's probably a replaced pick guard. You can see they've definitely at least replaced the pickups, potentially even the pickup rings, as well as the poker chip here, because that's all slightly darker. And we've got the golden speed knobs here. So that might still be original, but they really just transformed the whole look of that guitar just by swapping the pickups and a few plastics. But I've got to say, I dig that darker vibe. But then again, it's also possible that they just edited this photo. Because when you look at it here, it, it just kind of looks like a regular Les Paul classic that you're used to seeing from this era. But now we don't have the original hard shell case. It's either that or that top is super active at different angles that reflects the light differently. So I think we covered the top good enough. Let's take a look at the back. Once again, another interesting sight. This reminds me of the St. Patrick's Day SG. It kind of turned into a Leprechaun SG and had a bunch of sparkles within the finish. But that is a guitar that I teased in wiring and then I had purchased it and did a full review and demo as kind of a special thing. But what they did for that one is they actually painted the wood grain on. This one, it still appears to be the mahogany body, but something is definitely interesting about that. You can see we still have the original back plates here because they have the built-in shielding. And even the neck has a cool green burst color going on. And I just love the way that the bindings aged on this example. Maybe that's why this one looks so different. Maybe it's been in a smoking environment and the clear coat lacquer has ambered over top of the original finish to make it look different. That would also explain the discoloration in the plastics. But this is not the reason why I decided to share this guitar. Yeah, it's kind of a cool finish that not everybody knows about. And this one's got some interesting wood figuring. But have you ever heard the expression, I need another guitar like I need a bullet in the head? Um, somebody got that a little bit confused on this one. <laughs> oh, I need another guitar with a bullet in the head stock. <laughs> now, keep things in mind, this is a 2017 model guitar, which means it was probably made in late 2016 or very early 2017, because that's the way serial numbers worked back then. It was like a new car. But I first saw this one get listed two years ago, and it's 2020 now, so it was at least 2018. So this was a brand new guitar at the time, and somebody was a madman. And simply drilled straight through the face of the headstock and put a little metal ring in it. That is not photoshopped. That is 100% real. Why? Why would somebody do this? And the very best thing that I could come up with is this is how this dude hangs up his guitars. Instead of having a proper hanger like this installed into the wall, he probably just takes the bike hanging racks that you normally install in your garage, he puts them in his ceiling, and then he just hangs up his guitars like that. <laughs> it's kind of ingenious if you don't care about resale value anyways, but apparently this one did not stay with its original owner that long. But I guess at the same time, it might increase sustain because I would imagine the metal bits that they installed there weigh slightly more than the wood that they got rid of. So it's kind of like one of those fat heads. It increases the weight down there, which is supposed to increase sustain. Or maybe it was done strictly for cosmetic reasons, like a stage presence thing. Like I imagine the owner of this guitar having these big gauged ears. So he gauged his headstock, you know, just as a, a cosmetic compliment to himself. <laughs> I think for a big named artist, that could become a signature thing. It's like how Zach Wilde puts those giant fish hook eyelets inside of his guitars to swap out the strap buttons because he doesn't have to use strap lock systems because those puppies will never come out of there. And then he can just kind of clip your strap on. But whatever the reason, yeah, 
it happened. At least they didn't destroy the Gibson logo when they did it, and they didn't destroy the Les Paul model. Well, maybe a little bit on the L right there. So it was certainly an interesting choice. And it looks like they really scuffed up the face of the headstock, or maybe the shop just didn't end up cleaning it off. Even the fretboard looks a little bit grungy here. So yeah, that was an interesting one that I've had, you know, kicking around my eventually wiring pile. What do you guys think of this mod? Is it ingenious or is it just dumb? I mean, with how much this guitar was devalued by doing that, you could have bought the world's fanciest stand and paid somebody professionally to hang up your guitar. But I guess this is just kind of a DIY type of guy. But hey, at least we have Lock and Grover tuners on this instrument, and it was probably a great deal for someone, right? How much did this list for? $1,499.98. Um, I guess let's find out if that was a deal or not, because remember, prices were just recently revised. Oh wow, they were proud. Fortunately, since this one was brand new, we don't know how long ago this was, but apparently they were around 1800 bucks brand new at most dealers. Yeah, that seems to hold true because we have, is this, I think this is Z-Zounds, Zounds, yeah. Apparently it's pronounced Zounds, I don't understand that. Why have another Z in front of you? But honestly, these 2017 classics were actually specced really well. Locking tuners, nylon nut, that's kind of interesting. Regular 9-hole weight relief with 57 classic humbuckers stock. Hand-wired orange drop caps. 2-nomatic ABR-1 bridge. Is that the kind? Does it actually go into the top directly? That's a little bit too hard to see. This is around that time when they started using that faux BR-1. Those were a pretty good deal back then. Because now a classic's $2,000, and they've changed a lot with those. You get push-pull pots and stuff. You can check out this review and demo if you're interested in checking one of those out. So at 1500 bucks, ah oh man, that, that's not too much of a discount, but you gotta remember this was a brand new guitar at the time, so getting one for a reduced price was a pretty good deal, and it appears it still had original Gibson humbuckers in there, but not the original ones that came in it, or maybe it was and they just took the covers off. But man, I have a hard time believing that this one sold for much more than 1100 bucks, because even that I think is pushing it. Somebody would have had to have fallen in love with the wood grain on this one. Which honestly, that might be 100% possible, because it definitely has something going for it. Because I would imagine that hole would scare away a lot of people. But I don't know, maybe I'm in the minority here. I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. And man, I forgot about the aftermarket case. That was not a deal at all. You weren't getting any discount for somebody drilling a hole in that head. So somebody just fell in love with the aesthetic of this one, I guess, or they discounted it heavily. So let's go ahead and check out one of these 2017 Les Paul classics. <laughs> Question left, would you rock the bullet in a head classic or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.